Compounds Essential for online base defense and even clearing out or claiming an area. A compound can set you apart in terms of security or intimidation factor. If you've ever found yourself door camped, roof camped, or even with just too many nosy neighbors, you've probably thought of building your own. But you can't afford that, can you? Today's base is my favorite compound for a solo or a small group. With three externals to split cost and allow for amazing peak downs inside, this base is perfect if you need to keep an area clear or expect to be making enemies. With access to the shooting floor from ground level, you can quickly defend your area against any possible threats. While normally a compound base might seem outside of your reach, this is designed with you in mind. Featuring an incredibly compact form and three externals, we keep the cost small. On the screen are the build costs and upkeep. Of course, yours may vary depending on what you keep as stone or metal. With an incredibly small starting footprint and a tight compound area, this base can be secured just about anywhere. Today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. We all know Rust has plenty of downtime and Raid can be the best way to fill it, leveling up your super team to take on campaigns, dungeons, and even other players. But if you're like me and you prefer something a little more challenging, then you're in luck. Recently added into the game is the Doom Tower. This huge tower is basically a prison of the biggest bads around. Climbing the Doom Tower is going to take your strongest army of champions. However, don't be fooled by the easily cleared floors of monsters because when you work your way to the bosses, things will get really tough. These bosses don't care about your abilities. Ignoring certain debuffs, these bosses can do some real nasty stuff to your champions. My favorite thing about Raid is finding the perfect combo of special abilities to create a super team. And just this month, Raid released a massive new feature, Awakening, as well as a brutal new dungeon, the Iron Twin Fortress. Awakening your champion lets you choose a powerful blessing that can transform how they perform in battle. Right now until the 27th of October, if you log in and play Raid for 7 days, you'll receive the brand new Ultimate Death Knight just for playing the game. With free legendaries and amazing new battles, there has never been a better time to try Raid. And even if you've already tried it, today you can use the promo code DKRISES for a bunch of free items that can level your strongest champion to level 50 instantly. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, click my link in the description or scan my QR code and you'll not only be helping support the channel, but you will earn a unique bonus worth $30 absolutely free. Like I mean an amazing champion Aina, 200k silver, an energy refill, an XP boost, and an ancient shard. All of this and more can be yours and all you have to do is click that link in the description. Starting off with this compound, we're going to go ahead and find ourselves a nice little piece of terrain. While it doesn't have to be too flat, you do want to find a relatively flat area or a dip in the terrain like this. Starting off, we're going to build fairly close to the ground, but I'd go a little bit higher than that just to make sure that things are going to be easy to jump onto and we're not going to have any terrain issues later. Next, we're going to just start with just three triangles. While I understand the temptation to use single doors, you're going to hate yourself later if you do. Double doors all the way because we're going to want to swap out for a garage door later on in the wipe. Placing our TC in the back corner here, you can then decide if you want to place a single door, a double door, or a window. Personally, I prefer to go the window route as a window offers much more security than any of the early game doors. However, it can take some getting to, so ultimately each choice has its valid reasonings. In between here, before placing another double door frame, you're going to want to create a temporary shelf. Even if you only create the shelf next to the TC, you're going to save yourself some hassle later on. Right now, you can utilize this for multiple small box storage, and then we're going to place a second door frame. In this space, we are going to use a double door for now, again, replacing it with a garage door as soon as you've got it. With our tiny little base and somewhat of an airlock, we can get to farming. However, in this case, we're going to get to finishing the build. Finishing off, we're going to just close this off as it's going to be a circle starter. At this point, we're going to go ahead and pretend we've got all of the materials that we need and seal this small portion. Now, before going too much further, I do recommend upgrading all of that TC room to at least metal. This is going to make things a lot easier later on because you're not really going to have access to certain areas. Inside here, right next to the TC, we're actually going to block that off as just more honeycombing. While it can be a waste to some, and you could use that as a furnace room, I don't like the risk personally. As a jump up here, I like to use a furnace, but there are many more valid options, including using a ladder hatch if that's something you'd prefer to do. 
In here, we're also gonna go with the standard double door. At this point, you're gonna wanna remove these double doors and just go straight to the garage doors. Placing a garage door and opening it here, here, and here. We're at this point gonna extend our shelf out to cover two spots. This is gonna allow us to place a lot more storage. Down here, you can very easily place four large boxes and even a couple small boxes. While if you are operating with a bigger crew, it can be annoying with the four large boxes and you might wanna get rid of this one just to make it so that multiple people can get access to the TC at the same time. This extra garage door in between the loot boxes actually doesn't stop looting through, but you could put a lock on either of these boxes in there so that they would have to destroy the garage doors to get access to it. Gives you that little bit extra security and mostly just makes it a lot harder to get to TC. Down here, I like to go ahead and place a workbench right here as most of the high-end loot is gonna be in these boxes. This allows me to do my quick crafting and work my way out. Up here, obviously this isn't the most secure jump up, so we are gonna place a wall on either side and another double door. Above this double door, or in the double door rather, you're gonna wanna place a shelf. While it's not the most useful now, it's gonna be incredibly useful later, so we're gonna get it done now. I didn't need to do that. Now that we have that done, we're gonna wanna take care of our front door and honeycombing. But in order to do that, we actually have to place our externals, which is actually handy because, well, we wanna secure the area. Finding your TC, which should be metal on top, you're gonna go two to the left and drop yourself down. From this point here, we are gonna place a square, and then four more. At your fifth square, we're gonna place three triangles building to the left or right, but you're gonna wanna be consistent with each one. Once that's done, come all the way back here and destroy the first two squares. Coming back out, you should see that you run out of building priv just down this last area. Right here, we're gonna upgrade this triangle, wall it in, and place a TC. In front of that, you can either use a door, double door, or a window. Again, really up to you. I usually just go with the doors, and I usually put in two doorways. That's because external TCs are fairly valuable, and I don't want to be fighting over them later, so I'd rather just get it done and have it protected. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade these, but that can depend on your resources available. Next, we're going to want to do the same thing every two triangles building out with the five, and then your triangles. I'll catch you when that's done. With all of your externals placed, your footprint should be looking like this. Of course, we're not quite done. So we're gonna come back to one of these externals and we're gonna start building some triangles. Building one in the center and to each side, we're then gonna loop around like I've done here. Next, you're gonna be destroying the two triangles that are spare right here and thus creating a pattern like this. Go ahead and upgrade all of these triangles. At this point, it's really important to note that these two triangles are actually not connected, which means that over time, this triangle will start to decay because it won't receive support from the TC. In order to fix that, we are gonna be placing wall frames. Now, while they do mostly function for later, I like to get it done early just to avoid any issues if it takes me a little while to farm materials. Repeat that process on all three sides. At this point, you might be wondering, well, gee, Rex, that TC sure is obvious, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. That's okay, we're gonna start honeycombing the center of the base, and it'll make more sense of this space that we've left here. Simply run around your base and place those triangles attaching to the foundation of the center, center of your base, and then we'll get our front door down. From where your TC is, you're gonna move two triangles to the left, and this one's gonna be your front door. Jumping down here, we create the fairly standard door system, but we're gonna need a jump up. At this point, you can use another furnace, a ladder, a ladder hatch, or whatever else you might prefer. Next, the important thing would be to honeycomb the rest of your base. Everything else except for this one, which is obviously a jump up, can go ahead and have that triangle floor right in between them. Next, we can go ahead and actually just close in this second floor and get our front door completely secured.
This is gonna make it a lot harder for people to tell when we're coming and going. But honestly, I'm planning to get that compound down. And when I've tested this live, it didn't really take me long to get the full compound secured at, as a solo really at all. Of course, this entire center area, we're gonna be closing in the roof. Doing it this way and leaving just this chute as the up and down really limits raiders options and possible paths. As well over here, we are gonna extend out our shelf, creating a two shelf area and making it a little bit harder for raiders. It's for that reason I tend to prefer upgrading my shelves to at least stone, because if you do get that top down raid, they don't have an easy raid path straight to the floor. In here, you are only gonna wanna use garage doors. Anything else is gonna get a little irritating as you're trying to move around in this base. Double doors are fine early on, but you're gonna quickly find those couple spaces that a garage door is just so much more efficient. Going up here, I do like to get a ladder hatch. If you don't have it available, a ladder will work just fine, or you can create yourself another jump up using a temporary shelf. However, once you've got this ladder hatch, it allows you to get rid of this here and instead opt for just jumping directly to it. This can also mean that in the event of a raid, if you want to make things a little harder for a raider who didn't come prepared, you can close off that door. Moving off, you're gonna wanna connect the rest of that honeycomb, bringing it all the way to your roof. Of course, this isn't actually your roof and instead is about to become our shooting floor. Closing off all of the access points into the honeycomb and adding that little bit of security, we're gonna jump down to these areas here. Over here on all of these door frames that we've done, we can go ahead and take them up that second floor. However, before we upgrade those, we need to deal with these three triangles here, which is going to help create some peak downs for us up there. In order to do that, we're going to add double frames here and upgrade those. And then we're going to add half walls all around. Now for these half walls, you do have the option where you can box them in to avoid soft siding if you're worried about it. Otherwise, I would upgrade them to metal. Above each of those, we're gonna add a window frame. And then we gotta go back up to the roof. But first, we're gonna repeat this process on all sides and upgrade it, and then I'll catch you on the roof. On the roof, you should now be looking at something like this. With all of your externals looking like this, we've still got a little bit to do to secure it up. So now we're gonna create our wide gaps. Having these buildings on separate TCs allows us to actually reduce the overall upkeep. That's because upkeep works by going exponentially higher depending on the size of your building, and when you split it up like this between four TCs, you actually reduce how much it might scale up. Doing it this way can make things a lot more manageable for a solo, as well as create some really nice online defenses. Now let's go ahead and finish up our shooting floor. In order to do that, first we're going to add wall frames on either of these splits. This is going to help make it so that it's harder for people to jump through when we close in this area. And is actually a very important part of the build. Next coming over here, we're going to add window frames. Window frame. If you're having trouble placing, looking down or building yourself a shelf can actually make placing a lot easier. And window frames. Now you'll notice I skipped this one as it is optional and I'll explain why later in the video. However, we are gonna go for the wall as it is just more security. Go ahead and upgrade all of those and do it on all three sides. Now I have on one of the sides left it with the window just so I can explain it to you later in the build how that's gonna affect us. For everything else, we're gonna start closing it off just important to remember to leave one spot open so that you can still get up to the next floor. I do like to use this spot right here as it is next to this ladder hatch, but the opposite is also a fairly good option. That said, I am gonna use this spot here. So in order to place that, I am gonna get my door frame here already and place my triangle here. When filling in the zone in here, you wanna make sure that we only build above our star that we are standing on top of. Everything else, we're gonna wanna make sure that we only connect it to the other builds so that we don't accidentally connect something that shouldn't be. If you're having issues with stability in your placing, make sure to add those double door frames as we are gonna need them later anyhow. 
Coming over here for that jump up, I am going to be using another ladder hatch. Now, before going up to work on the next floor, we are going to want to add double door frames into these areas just before these peak downs. Doing so here and on all the other sides. Coming up to the roof, this is what we're looking at. So now all we've got to do over on these sides is connect the rest of the roof, closing it in right here. Again, make sure that you're connecting to this building and not this building. Go ahead and upgrade all of those and do it for all three sides. Now you'll see here, in addition to these being some nice peak downs with some good clearance, you've got this one. Now this one would be really handy, but it can also be covered mostly by other angles so it's not completely essential. That said, I really like the benefit of having this angle as well, and you might as well. We'll get to why it might be a bad idea in a minute. Next, let's get our roof pieces on. Here, we're gonna add the full roof piece right here and here. Doing the same thing on all sides and upgrading it creates a nice little gap here. In addition to the gaps covered throughout just about all of this base, you really don't want to give up on any peak downs, especially when defending as a solo. It can be very important to have your bases covered. Now, right here, things get a little different. Rather than what you might expect based on this, we're actually going to switch to the roof triangles and place them inwards. I find going to the left at about a 45 degree angle to be the easiest way to place it. But again, the shelf method can also work if you're having trouble. Go ahead and upgrade those, and we're actually going to keep the shelf as well. With those roof pieces done and some amazing peak downs to cover our base, next we want to take care of our respawn room that's going to give us our roof access. For that, we're going to place ourselves a doorway here, doorway here, and a doorway here. And then we're going to place some walls. Now, you can choose between walls, or some people like to go with the doorways all around in order to use a shop front. I personally don't care about seeing my roof that much because if I've already lost it with the turrets there, that visibility is not going to give me much more than it's going to give them. Closing in this area and getting it sealed with garage doors gives me a little bit of space if I need to drive in a helicopter later. Right here at the back, I like to place a locker and you can place multiple on each side, but because I usually play this as a solo, this is usually my roof bedroom. Now, while there's plenty of room for more than just that one player, even fitting in a lot more bags or a few beds and extra lockers, of course, I'm usually not too worried about that. And one is more than enough for me. Coming over here, we're going to be placing our turrets. Your turrets will be placed onto each of these triangles in these roof pieces here. Sitting in these positions, they will have every angle of your roof absolutely covered. While it's not designed to shoot passerbys, meaning that you're not gonna accidentally kill that clan that's just trying to fly home, it will 100% shoot anybody trying to land on your roof or cause you any harm. This means that you shouldn't accidentally piss off a Zerg, but you'll definitely be ready to defend yourself. This does, however, dive into why this might not be the best idea. While it is really nice to have these angles right here, this one in particular means that somebody could soft side this roof piece right here. In order to protect that on these sides and in order to protect someone from hiding underneath, we simply fill that in with half walls and make sure that back piece is a full wall as we've done below. Now it's completely optional which you prefer and if you, pl and if you plan on mostly being online, you don't really need to worry about the soft siding. And since each turret will protect underneath from someone hiding in it, it's not a concern that I really have. I prefer to keep the space open as you already limit the space once you've added in your embrasures. Now, once you're at this point, we've got a lot of wide open windows. So dropping down below from that roof place, we're gonna start placing our embrasures all the way around. You want to place them on the outside as it's going to give you better angles, but it's not a big deal if you accidentally place them wrong as you can pick them up with a hammer fairly easily. You'll notice that placing the embrasures on the bottom ones is a lot more difficult. While not required because you do have some nice angles here, if you do want to place them, you are going to have to drop down and do it from underneath. 
One thing worth mentioning and completely optional to you is this piece here on each side is something I personally don't like to seal and upgrade. Instead of sealing that in, I like to use these pieces here as an external jump up from the external area of my compound straight up into here. Now again, while absolutely completely optional to do this, I have found that the amount of times I get annoyed going up through my base in this area here, if I wanna come in through one of the back gates, usually leads me to wanting to build this in. However, it does create an extra vulnerability as getting through those ladder hatches is fairly simple, so it's something you might wanna think about. Jumping down in here, we're still not a compound. In order to compound us up, we're gonna come to the second square out and we're gonna close this in, adding a door on each side and a window on these sides. Go ahead and close in that roof and do the same on all sides. Once that's all done and you've got your high external walls ready, we're ready to compound the base. Now starting off, you want to try to line it up so that you're going to be in the middle of the window. If you glitch a little bit into the building, that's fine. You do want a little bit of overlap. Now you can place it so that it is fairly parallel to the building, but I like to angle it just a little bit in towards the base. Once you've placed your first one, you can come over here and place a second one by placing your back against this triangle here, this foundation that sticks out. And look, you want to look kind of directly where it's pointing. Then we're going to go ahead and place that second wall, making sure it's mostly level. And then we're going to come back over here and do the same thing on this side. By repeating that process, you should always line these up, but you might be a little too close to the base if you don't give yourself enough of an angle straight here. If you're placing it parallel, it does become a little harder to do the second one, but give you a little bit more space for those large furnaces. When placing the second one, you're gonna do the same process here, but you wanna make sure that you're angling it towards this area here. This can be a lot harder for inexperienced compound builders, and it's something you might wanna really practice on your own server. If done incorrectly, you can end up with a gap a gap can be very unfortunate and can allow someone to actually get into your base. It's for this reason and many others that practicing bases like this ahead of time can be really important. However, it can still be fixed. This can cause you some annoyances such as people shooting through your walls. For each of these external walls, you're going to want to make sure you've got yourself doors slapped in with I usually prefer them opening inwards to allow you to get in and out a lot faster and then we're gonna be adding some more embrasures. It might be a little tricky to place them at first depending because the wall can sometimes interfere, but even if it actually comes into the building, you should be able to place it fairly easily. This is gonna allow you to see around before you go in and out of your base and give you a little bit more vision. At this point, it can still be fairly easy for some people to get in, so you're gonna to wanna to acquire yourself some barbed wire ASAP. Acquiring a barricade of any caliber and placing it right here is gonna be enough to stop most people from trying to get in. That said, there are gonna be some very determined grubs out there, and for that reason, we're moving on to the next step. Coming in from our gates, right here on this first triangle, we're adding a turret. Before doing so, we're gonna add a half wall on either side, which is gonna help reduce the griefing potential onto these turrets. Placing that turret as far back as possible, it's gonna have all of these angles covered. This means that if someone's trying to blow in through your doors or trying to come in overhead, this thing's gonna take them out. In addition, this also gives us that nice jump up to this ladder hatch I was talking about earlier. That can be incredibly useful when you're coming home from a run and need to quickly get to that roof to defend your base. Coming in the main door, we have a few more things to take care of. Jumping up here, we're going to get that locker placed and placed behind a window frame. Window frames are pretty much my go-to preference as they offer a lot of security for very low cost. Coming over here, we're gonna populate the shelf with just a couple boxes. This is usually just my quick drop or anything I plan on recycling. You can also place a box here, but it makes getting up and down through this area a little bit more difficult. 
As I primarily use the jump up of a furnace here, it's something I like to keep clear. If you do plan on switching to a ladder hatch instead here, then you don't really need to be worried about that, and you can get that extra box placement right here. In this slot here, I actually usually place my tier 2. That's, that is because I will take my tier 3 and put it right here and bring my tier 2 upstairs. Having the tier 2 upstairs is mostly just a convenience thing so that I don't always have to go downstairs. I'm, I'm really that lazy. Next to the tier 2 workbench, I place my large battery. A large battery is more than enough to keep the six turrets that this base uses powered at all times. In addition to that, I've only ever had to use four solar panels on the roof, wired up with a roof combiner, and everything is secure. Right here, I do sometimes place a bag, but that's mostly only for online rain defense or if I'm spawning somebody in. Other than that, it's really just an option of filling out this area with garage doors if you're worried about that for later. However, completely not required, it can add that extra security factor if you're worried about that raid coming. A quick thank you again to Raid for sponsoring today's video. If you haven't already, click that link down below in the description to not only help support the channel, but unlock some amazing free rewards.